While India was grappling with COVID-19 infection, patients who recovered from COVID-19 started presenting to the hospital with the complaints like redness and pain around the eyes and even blindness, bleeding from the nose, headache and cheek pain, even loosening of teeth. These were the patients who were having mucormycosis infection. Mucormycosis is a deadly fungal infection with 50% mortality rate. And if it reaches brain, the mortality rate is very high, up to 80%. Delhi-based Sir Gangaram Hospital reported multiple cases of mucormycosis infection. And these were seen in post-COVID patients, patients who have been recovered from COVID-19. Mucormycosis is an opportunistic fungal infection. They attack immunocompromised patients. Opportunistic infections are the ones who do not infect immunocompetent people, but whenever the immunity level is low, they attack and invade the human body. So all these patients were post-COVID patients. Why were these post-COVID patients having low immunity? Because of the rampant steroid use in the COVID treatment. All the moderate and severe cases of COVID-19 were treated with steroids to control the cytokine storm, but that steroid in turn caused immunosuppression and immunosuppression led to infections with mucormycosis. Diabetes is the greatest risk factor for mucormycosis. 94% of the patients who were diabetic who got COVID-19 and were admitted to hospital and steroids were used for the treatment, those were the patients who were immunosuppressed and that immunosuppression led to mucormycosis infection. This infection enters through nose where it causes nasal blockage, nasal bleeding and crusts can be seen in the nose. Then it enters eyes where it can cause blindness, pain around the eyes. And then it enters brain. When it enters brain, the mortality ratio is very high. What are the signs and symptoms of mucormycosis? The most common symptoms are pain and redness around the eyes and nose, nasal bleeds, nasal blockage, nasal discharge, cough, fever, chest pain, shortness of breath even after recovery from COVID-19. And even patients presented with loosening of teeth and dental complaints, they went to dentist for their complaints, but later on they were diagnosed to be the cases of mucormycosis because mucormycosis causes weakening of the jaw. It causes blurring of vision, double vision, the initial eye symptoms. And when it enters brain, it causes altered mental status. For diagnosis of mucormycosis, you have to take biopsy from the nasal crust and nasal turbinates and KOH preparation is made. You can perform CT scan, CT scan of paranasal sinuses, brain, chest, wherever the infection is present. Other than that, baseline investigations like CBC, renal function test, liver function test, serum ferritin and HbA1c has to be done in the patients. This is a CT of a patient with mucormycosis. Normally, the paranasal sinuses are empty, black, like this. But if you see in this picture, the arrow pointing out towards the area of inflammation wherever the fungus is growing, that area is thick. And if you see in the third picture, the whole paranasal sinus is blocked by fungal infection. That whole paranasal sinus contains fungal infection. This is a CT of lungs in a patient of mucormycosis and this all white area is the area of infection. This is a classical picture of how mucormycosis looks on biopsy. Coming to the management of mucormycosis. In the management of mucormycosis, the two most important things are to stop steroids, you wean the patient off from steroids and you control the blood glucose. Medical treatment includes liposomal amphotericin B injection. What you do is that you give a test dose to see for hypersensitivity. You give one milligram of amphotericin diluted in 20 ml of normal saline infused over 30 minutes and you check for hypersensitivity reaction. And if there is no hypersensitivity reaction, you begin with the treatment of liposomal amphotericin. Other than that, amphotericin is nephrotoxic. It causes damage to the kidneys. So you have to maintain adequate hydration before starting amphotericin B infusion. And with the infusion of amphotericin B, you have to monitor patient. You have to monitor patient by doing complete blood count, renal function test, liver function test. Since it is hepatotoxic, since it is nephrotoxic, you have to do RFTs, LFTs on every alternate day. 
And with that, if the patient's creatinine level goes above 2.5 milligram per deciliter, you have to stop m tyrosine. And with that, you have to check regular blood glucose for strict glycemic control. If the patient is allergic to m tyrosine, the other options include posaconazole, another antifungal that is used for the treatment of mucormycosis. With medical treatment, if the disease is extensive, you have to go for surgical treatment. Since the necrotic tissue is present in the body and you have to remove that necrotic tissue by debridement surgery. Treatment of mucormycosis needs a team approach with medicine specialist, neurologist to control CNS complication, ENT specialist for the debridement surgery to remove the necrotic tissue, dentist for dental problems, surgeon and an ophthalmologist. For prevention of mucormycosis, the most important thing is early diagnosis and treatment. If the patient is diagnosed with mucormycosis early in the course of disease, the treatment is more effective. And one important thing is that when patient has recovered from COVID-19, they should not lower down their guards, they should wear masks, they should avoid polluted areas, they should wash their hands oftenly so that they don't get infected with mucormycosis. In summary, we talked about diabetes and steroid use are the major risk factors that cause immunosuppression in a post-COVID patient that led to mucormycosis infection. Infection starts from nose, it spreads to eyes, then to brain, where it has high mortality. KOH prep, CT scans can be performed and baseline investigations need to be done. You have to stop steroid, control blood glucose, and start liposomal amphotericin B. Other options include postconazole, and you have to monitor LFTs, RFTs. Surgical treatment includes debridement surgery, and for the treatment of mucormycosis, team approach must be there. Prevention of mucormycosis includes early diagnosis and treatment, and post-COVID, certain precautions that need to be followed. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button, and check out my videos on COVID-19 treatment updates. The links of those videos are given below in the description. Thank you very much.